bleak news for the world savers. The long-term impact of the global economic downturn will be felt for many decades, according to a new report by HSBC. Despite encouraging signs of recovery, the longer-term impact of the crisis will cause waves for millions of people who have weathered the storm by raiding their retirement funds and amassing debt. Joining me now is Michael Schweitzer from HSBC. Well, Michael, is it as depressing as it sounds? It's not as depressing as it sounds, provided that people take the necessary action to start to address uh, the issue. Of particular importance is the, a UN survey that basically said that the population is is aging at a rate that's unprecedented in history. And by 2050, they expect a tripling of the population of people who are over the age of 60. So the, the problem is very real and isn't going away anytime soon. And can we rely on governments to pick up the slack? The opposite is happening, actually. Governments are pushing to reform pension laws to put more onus on the individual to find ways to prepare for their own retirement. These figures are very alarming. Are we moving towards a greater global poverty rate? I think it's one of those things where people need to take action and understand what's going on. Certainly, states' budgets are stretched. They can't do the things that they used to do, and we're all very privy to that, and we've seen uh, what's happened there over the past six or seven years. Interestingly, 66, 67 percent of pre-retirees today are concerned about running out of money in retirement or simply having enough to live in retirement. Despite that, 40 percent of those individuals either stopped or significantly reduced saving over the last five or six years, creating a situation, as you mentioned, where millions of people are facing potential retirement uh, with shortfalls as much as 25 percent of what they may have expected before the downturn. Do you think the problem is maybe a lack of confidence in the pension system? For example, lots of civil servants are having their pensions cut. People don't understand what it is that they actually need for retirement. And that uncertainty is creating the, the discomfort for a lot of people. It, it's one of those difficult first steps to take. I always use going to the dentist as an example. People don't go to the dentist because they're afraid of the pain that will come through the visit, yet deferring that visit the pain can be much worse than it would be if you if you tackled the issue head on today. And certainly it's not in the same level of significance, but it highlights kind of the issue of dealing with the problem today and starting to think about what you need to do for the future. Perhaps it would be better for people just to buy a house rather than pay into a pension. Is that the way we're going? Many people think about pensions as that thing that companies or states contribute to that they then to get to draw on when they retire. But there's certainly lots of opportunities for people to put money away today to understand what they need to save to create a retirement income in the future. And you're right, many people are looking at property as a potential income source in retirement. Two thirds of pre-retirees said that they'll consider a property as a, as a means of generating retirement income, as well as cash deposits, pensions was another area. But it, it doesn't diminish the importance of people taking action on their own to put money aside for retirement. By 2016, all UK companies will have to arrange a pension for their employees. Will this have much of an impact? What the states are saying there, I think, is we need people to take more ownership of their futures because we're just not sure what we can deliver. And this is a trend that's been across the world. A lot of variance between countries. People of France, as an example, are the most uncomfortable with their future, and yet they have one of the most significant pension programs uh, in the world today. So what can people do to avoid this pension trap? First and foremost, uh, it's never too late to start saving. People have to recognize that. Now we recommend that people, if they can, start saving by the age of 30 for retirement. That time series does have a significant impact for the future. But taking that first step to just have any kind of plan, to do something is better than doing nothing. So the first thing we say to people is take stock. Understand what it is that you need. The second step that we tell people they should take is to understand um, that there are unexpected things that are going to occur throughout your life. Part of having a plan is understanding how to manage those, those unexpected occurrences. We're coming out of obviously a pretty significant downturn. We're now six years in the rearview mirror. But that hangover, as you mentioned at the outset, is still there. So people need to think about how they refill the pot. Finally, wrapping all of that in a relationship with a trusted professional advisor who can really help you understand what you might need to do to achieve that goal is, is the kind of final step that we think people should take. Finally, from a systematic economic perspective, people are going to be working a lot later in life. Obviously, this will have a knock-on effect 
like graduates being out of work longer. So what other structural consequences can we expect from the pension crisis? In previous reports that we've, we've issued, we talk about the fact that many people will be supporting their children longer and children will be supporting their parents at some point in time. All of that's exacerbated if people don't plan for the future. So it's critical, again, kind of stepping back to the simple steps, take stock of where you're at, understand what it is that you need to do to change that future, and even a little bit goes a long way.